are AMD going absolutely insane? From the rumors, they are pushing Zen 7 to 32 cores for their mainstream platform. And this means that Grimlock is not going to just see a massive increase in core count, but also huge improvements in IPC, a massive uplift in clock frequency, and the cache is allegedly going to the stratosphere as well. And this all comes on the back of what we've been learning about Zen 6, or Medusa if you prefer, for the client. AMD for quite some time now has stuck to eight cores per CCD, again for clients. This is going to raise, according to all of the rumors, to 12 cores per CCD. So that's 24 cores, 48 friends for the desktop and also for the mobile side of things. But now AMD wants to crank things up a notch or two because, well, they are going to be facing off some pretty stiff competition in the form of Intel's Nova Lake and subsequent architectures. But all of this is also very interesting in timing because just a few days ago, AMD hosted their financial analyst event. And we learned some very interesting details, as you can see on screen right here. Industry first, 2NM, extension of leadership, new AI data type support, and more AI pipelines. This is for Zen 6 and Zen 6C. So I think it's very interesting for us to go into some new information that AMD have actually released regarding the performance targets of Zen 6, because they are actually kind of bonkers as well. They've just dropped. And then we're going to get into some new stuff for Zen 7, right after this quick message from this video's sponsor. A big thank you to OBS Bot for sponsoring this video, and they produce a fantastic range of cameras, including this OBS Bot Tiny 2 Lite, and power the eSports World Cup broadcasts. With the upcoming Black Friday sale, they have a great range of cameras which will be on offer, including not just the uh, tiny to light here, but also the tiny SE. And these cameras are excellent if you're getting into content creation or streaming, or perhaps you just want a good camera to be able to speak to your friends, or maybe you do something a bit more business orientated and putting together conferences or lectures. I've been regularly using both of these cameras on the channel for the last several months and they have been absolute game changers for content production on the channel. Not only are the cameras excellent quality, but they easily fit in with my workflow, which means that content creation is much easier and it's a lot less stress. The Tiny2 Lite is a small but feature-packed camera which leverages AI for tracking and utilizes a fully motorized gimbal. The Tiny2 Lite is the primary camera I use for making most of my YouTube content due to its ease of use and the half-inch CMOS for high-quality 4K 60fps video capture. It also performs excellently in low-light conditions which makes it excellent as well for green screen. There are several features including a hand tracking and gesture control. And if you're creating lectures or working in group environments, for example, you can tell it just to track a single person or set it to track one hand on one person specifically. And also this gesture for pointing towards an object, the camera can therefore follow along using its zoom and gimbal function. You can also enable auto zoom and use this tracking or control zoom with hand gestures, which again is great for presentation or be able to create workout videos, or if you want to create video game streaming highlights. All of this and more is controllable via the OBS bot software. And while it is optional, you don't need to install it. You can simply use the camera using OBS or Zoom and it will detect just fine. But if you do install the software, you can capture and stream within the OBS bot software directly. You can adjust Zoom, focus and image behavior and access a ton of specific effects such as changing your eye color or applying makeup. Now I'm going to confess, I don't think anyone, including myself, wants to see me with long eyelashes. But those effects are all powered by AI, and if you are creating fun content, for example, a horror-themed game stream, it can be absolutely amazing to try these features out. OBS Bot's software also gives you access to set it as a virtual camera. So you can apply those effects and then output this as a virtual camera as a source to everything from OBS Studio, NVIDIA Broadcast, Zoom, and much more besides. It also features a great built-in microphone, and small size and wide compatibility with software such as Zoom and Discord, it's a great camera for business calls and conferences to boot. There's also the budget Ozbot Tiny SE, and this shares many of the same features of its bigger brother, but rather than 4K, it drops the resolution down to 1080p, albeit capturing up to 100 frames per second. Image quality is still fantastic in low light conditions, and just as importantly, the cool technologies such as AI tracking with auto zoom enabled by the two axis gimbal remains in place, like the Tiny2 Lite. 
So if you're interested in picking up one of these cameras, now is a perfect opportunity. OBS Bot will be offering a 22% discount for the Tiny2 Lite over its Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. And they're also offering the discount on the Tiny SE. So if you're just getting into Twitch streaming or dipping your toes into content creation, or you just need a good webcam for business calls, you can save 20% on the OBS Bot Tiny SE. Click a link in the video description. And once again, thanks to OBS Bot for sponsoring the video. Thanks again to OBS Bot for sponsoring the video. And also thank you very much for checking out the ad. You can find out much more about their cameras and products by clicking the link in the video description. And doing so, of course, does help support the channel. Thanks very much again to both yourself and OBS Bot. And now let's just get back onto the content. So yeah, WCCF Tech first spotted this, at least to my knowledge, and I'm gonna, of course, link this in the video description, but delivering the world's next generation of performance with Venice, which is for the data center, but there are some interesting parallels we can bring in for the desktop. Next generation of Venice, 1.3X, actually over that, greater than, thread density, and a 1.7X in terms of performance and efficiency. Now, of course, with Zen 6, we will see an increase in the number of threads slash cores. Um, so you can't necessarily just say, well, all of that is gonna be IPC, but I think it does really illustrate the fact that AMD are gonna be cranking up performance considerably because not all of this can simply be explained by more cores. I still think that we're gonna see quite a big improvement in the IPC gains, plus of course, clock frequencies. As for the clock frequencies of Medusa, it's still a little bit early to tell. I wouldn't be surprised if there are some cherry pick silicon, which internally are hitting absolutely monstrous speeds, but I think that it's more likely, at least for the average desktop user, around six to 6.3 gigahertz is probably gonna what, what we're gonna see for Ryzen 10,000 or whatever the hell AMD ends up calling it. Give me some comments down below of what you think AMD will end up calling the range. I personally think that they may stick with the similar names that they've had with their recent laptop products like the Strix Halo, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Anyway, let's move on to Zen 7, shall we? I wanna give credit to Harakazi on Twitter, 5719, as he's compiled a bunch of information, but I also wanna give credit to Moore's Law is Dead, as he has leaked some of this stuff. Now, there are a few things that I have managed to confirm, at least confirm with loose, loose technical terms with a few sources, but all of this is pretty new, so I haven't had a lot of time to discuss this with sources, so I'll try and find out more information about this, so I'm presenting as is, generally speaking. But according to Tom, Zen 7 is going to hit between 15 25% IPC uplift. This is over Zen 6, by the way, and that is pretty damn significant. So if you already have a Zen 5 based process and you're like, you know what, I'm just, I'm happy, I'm good, I'm going to skip over Zen 6, you're going to get an absolutely huge increase from Zen 5 to Zen 7. That is going to be absolutely nuts. 8% of this uplift is from the new cache design alone. Now, yeah, at this point, these numbers can certainly fluctuate and change because obviously one, we don't exactly know all of the tests and the final state of the silicon at this point, but also, you know, we'll have to wait and see what the actual final numbers are, like IPC gains, they're notoriously difficult to pin down. They do say that this is 15 to 25% in spec int, and that is a pretty typical test, but again, whether or not that actually comes to fruition, we'll see, but I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if that is actually quite accurate. And it's apparently 16 to 20% uh, simulated per core. So that's a Zen to Zen per core difference. So that's pretty damn huge. Now notice the uh, Steamboat, which is for Epic, basically, these are data center chips. We have eight by 33 cores. So that's 264 cores total. And that gives you well over two gigabytes. Two gigabytes, I just wanna stress that, two gigabytes of L3 cache. I just think that that is absolutely insanity. I mean, that's just my personal opinion, but I think that's absolutely insanity. Now, moving on to what I think is gonna be a lot more interesting for most of the viewers here. Silverton chiplet is 16 cores. So once again, Medusa, we saw six, uh, 12 cores, um, and of course that would be 24 threads per CCD. So this is now going to bump that to 16. 
and 32 megabytes of L2 cache and 64 megabytes of L3 on die. Now notice they also state there's 160 megabytes of L3. This is under the CCD. So that's 224 megabytes of L3 cache per CCD, which is absolutely crazy. So what does this mean? Well, according to the information here, we could see 32 cores with 448 megabytes of L3 cache. Now, that honestly to me is kind of nuts. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this compares against Intel's, well, Nova Lake and subsequent architectures, or should I say for Zen 6 and Zen 7, we're going to face it against Intel's Nova Lake and subsequent architectures. The rumor is that Nova Lake is really good. I think that at least in terms of multi-threading, AMD will probably be behind on Zen 6, simply because of the multi-threading, you know, the, just 52 cores. Yes, some of them are e-core spam, but the e-cores and Nova Lake, they are not to be trifled with. They are really good from what I'm hearing. But with that said, guys, like, AMD are just going absolutely nuts here. They are stating the clock speeds obviously are to be decided. So, yes, we don't 100% know. But we're looking at, according to these figures here, a 50 to 67% uplift. Now, let's just assume, worst case scenario, is we're looking at 50% uplift over Zen 6. If you compare that to what we have right now, that is absolutely crazy. Now, I do, I do want to say that I don't necessarily know if this is going to one hundred percent benefit gamers immediately, because ultimately speaking, I, like even if we look at what the PlayStation Six, for example, is capable of, the Zen Six C cores, roughly speaking, I'm sure there's going to be a few customizations here or there. But it's like you know, the clock frequency are going to be nowhere near what we have on desktop and so on and so on. But that also leads to some very interesting questions. Like, you could potentially just get a 16-core uh, Zen 7 CPU and be absolutely okay. Like, the performance is still going to be absolutely insane. But obviously now, CPUs are becoming a lot more important, I suspect. And the rumor slash what Tim Sweeney, for example, has said is that they want um, he wants Unreal Engine 6 to become a lot more multi-thread focus. He literally said this in an interview. So it's going to become extremely interesting. Anyway, one document said a 20% geo mean performance uplift from Zen 7 to Zen 7 X3D in non-gaming apps. So that would mean, of course, typically speaking, games are really sensitive to cache. There's a lot of other information, of course, and I will leave a link to Tom's video in the video description. But honestly, for me, those are some of the highlights. I'm going to be absolutely intrigued to see what the desktop looks like in the next couple of years. Ultimately speaking, Medusa is, I think, going to be really impressive. Now, there are a lot of debates at the moment of what actual socket this thing can take. The early rumors that I was initially hearing is it was going to be on AM6. But now, uh, I put out a video, I can't remember how long ago. It was not too long ago. You can search on the channel, I believe. But I was now hearing that, yeah, it's going to be on AM5. And from what Tom seems to be saying, it also seems to be AM5. And I think if you think about it from the from the perspective of memory and just what's going on in the industry right now, I kind of suspect that that might make a lot of sense. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see how bandwidth constrained these things are. But that said, there is so much cash on these things. Like, I mean, geez, guys. <laughs> like... 448 megabytes of L3 cache, that's almost the equivalent of an entire PlayStation 1 or whatever disk contained in the cache, which is kind of crazy when you think about it from that perspective. And that's not including things like, you know, L2 caches and so on. I don't exactly know what the status of the caches are, whether they're exclusive caches and, you know, whatever else we'll have to wait and see. But it's to me anyway, it's kind of crazy how much cache this actually is. So, um, yeah, I think AMD are going to be firing all cylinder on all cylinders over the next uh, couple of generations of processors. And honestly, given it's not just Intel that are putting a lot of pressure, of course, on the x86 market at the moment, you also have the likes of ARM and other contenders. So it's going to be a very interesting time. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.